is Monday morning. Take your Bibles to Revelation chapter number two. We're going to be looking at the second church. Remember, the first church was Ephesus, and it was the loveless church. It had lost its first love. Now we're going to be looking at the loyal church, and that is the church that is persecuted, and it's the church of Smyrna. Now remember, I told you that the churches, the seven churches, are not only literal churches that you'll find today. You'll find all kinds of flavors of churches that are in, in the world today, but also they were available or they were those type of churches in every generation. But I also believe that those seven churches give us an outline of what Christianity is going to be like through the history. That early church of Ephesus from the time that Jesus established the church until about 170 AD was the uh, Ephesian mentality of the church. That is, the church had left its first love by, by 170 AD. It was beginning to wane and to move away from Christ. And then in 170 AD, uh, there was a great persecution. Now, the persecution actually began with the early church in Jerusalem. And so there was persecution all this time, but they would continue to be persecuted. So all the way up to uh, the, the time in 312 when uh, Constantine was uh, actually became emperor. He embraced Christianity, and, and it seems to be that the persecution began to wane against the church. Now, all that is to say is that the loveless church was also kind of overlapping with the church that was at Smyrna, that is, the church that was persecuted. So those who kept their first love, those who were serving the Lord, and even those who weren't serving the Lord, maybe as deeply as they should be, were being persecuted. And that's represented by the Smyrna church. Now, in chapter number 2, verse 8, it says, And the angel of the church of Smyrna write, so again, write this to the pastor of Smyrna. These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works the tribulation, the poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews, but are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Then in verse number 10 at the very end that he says, be faithful unto death. Now this was a church that was being heavily persecuted. I find it rather interesting that it's founded in uh, what we call today modern day Turkey. Smyrna is today, Izmir is the name of it. Izmir, Turkey. Uh, today, it has about a population of 3 million people. Uh, it's about 35 miles north of Ephesus. It's considered the safest seaport of its day when this letter was written. And though it's not as large as Ephesus, it had a thriving economy. And because it was a main trade route uh, from Rome uh, into India or into Persia, it was a lot of people traveling through. Uh, the... Uh, the Greeks actually says this was the birthplace of Homer, by the way. For those of you who may know Homer who wrote the Iliad, uh, this was his birthplace. It actually had a famous street of gold that went from the sea uh, shore all the way through the middle of town and ran up to the hill culminating at Mount Pegasus. Uh, there were many, many temples there. A temple to Zeus, a uh, temple to Apollos, Ascapolis, Aphrodite, and many others. It was a very pagan city. But the thing about Smyrna was it was very, very loyal to Rome. The most all cities had to show homage to Rome, but this is a very loyal city. They had adopted Roman life. They, they were very much Roman-based. Uh, On occasion, they served uh, Rome formally in such a great way that Rome built a cathedral or a temple there that they could worship the Roman uh, emperor Tiberius. Uh, that was in 26 AD, even before the death of Christ. They had turned to Roman emperor worship. And so they had set this temple up in Rome, excuse me, in Smyrna, Rome had. And because they worshiped this emperor, they forced everybody in the surrounding area to come once a year and to offer sacrifice or to offer incense, to bow down, and to worship the Roman 
Caesar, whoever happened to be Caesar at that time. They had to bow down and worship them. Uh, but the Christians wouldn't do that. They said, no, we're not going to bow down. So many were martyred. One was a man by the name of Polycarp. Read the story. Google Polycarp. He was a bishop, uh, the pastor there at Smyrna. He may have been the pastor at this time when uh, John is writing this. Though also I find it very in, in, uh, informative that Polycarp actually was a disciple of John the Apostle who wrote this letter. So they, their lives overlapped, we know that. And we believe that John may have even been the one who led Polycarp to, to faith in Christ. Many believe he was the one who ordained him. So when John is writing this letter to Smyrna, he knew Polycarp. He, he knew uh, many of the people there at Smyrna. And Christ is talking to this church that is a heavily persecuted church. Now, I want to speak for just a moment because we find very few persecuted churches in America. There are some who have very light persecution. And we're starting to see it against churches like ourselves <coughs> who preach sound doctrine, who call sin, sin. <coughs> that we are becoming even more persecuted in the sense of being called names, if you can call that persecution. But let me tell you, all over the world today, there are thousands and thousands, if not millions of Christians that are persecuted in the countries where Christianity is still illegal. Um, the Voice of the Martyrs and many others have chronicled many of the things that are going on in these nations. But nations like Turkey, nations like Indonesia, the heavy persecution that came underneath the Nazis and or uh, the communists, that there have been more martyrs since 1900 to today. So let's say for 122 years, there have been more martyrs in this last 122 years than in the first 1900 years of Christianity altogether. And so Christians and our brothers and sisters in Christ are being persecuted all over the world. So as we go through this letter tomorrow and we talk about the com commendation that God gives to this church, we need to recognize this is a very real thing that is happening. And it might become even more real in America very soon as we see the media, as we see politicians, as we see these movements that are rising up and casting down uh, accusations on the church and, and making the church look like the church is bigoted, the church is full of hate, hate mongers, and, and that we are a people to be despised. And so when we think about the church of Smyrna, uh, there are churches like this all over the world, and we need to pray for them. So let's do that today. Father, we do pray for the churches that are being persecuted around the world. First of all, we thank you that we don't see that happening right now in America. But maybe, Father, that's what the, the church needs here to get us off of high center, is to see persecution come. And we know when persecution comes, it, it will purify the church. And many people who claim to be Christian will no longer identify with the church. But, Father, we pray for those who right now around the world, our brothers and sisters in Christ, who are faithful, places like North Korea, and places like Russia, many places around the world where Christians are being persecuted. Father, I'm reminded just uh, not even a decade ago how so many were burned alive in their churches in, in, in Indonesia. Uh, Father, I pray for those churches. I pray for the individual Christians. Give them strength. Give them hope. I pray, Father, that their martyrdom will mean something, not only to you, but, Father, that they'll be able to make an impact on the culture in which they lived. Help us to face whatever comes our way. Help us to never back down because uh, simply we're not well thought of or because we're called names. Help us, Father, to always stand up and to be firm and, and to stand for Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <music>